yep. and the legend of Jimmy Tree Legs. <laughs> um, fun, fun holiday that we celebrate in our house. Every um, single year. Your your earrings are very subtle today. I really like, yeah, <laughs> me and Georgia were talking. Um, you can take the fake Mexican out of the girl, right? <laughs> but then we couldn't really come up with the rest of the statement. But you can't take the memories of being fake Mexican for so many years out. Right, right. As well. Right. So, uh, what happened here? Yeah, there's your bush. I'm looking at I'm looking at all your shrubbery there for pine cone day. There's my bush. Yeah, oh, okay. there's your bush. Man, <laughs> for I, the audio I listeners. don't know if they're going to understand that one, but there's your bush and there's uh, Jimmy Tree Legs himself right there. Jimmy Tree Legs, um definitely a more subdued kind of palatable <laughs> version of Jimmy Tree Legs because as we've said, Jimmy Tree Legs is stuff of nightmares. Right, right, um, right. And you can't really make a yarn uh, nightmare. No. You know what I mean? No, you can't. It's more of a feeling. Um, and it's a fear. vibe. Yeah, it's more of a vibe. <laughs> but think Slender Man. Yes, think Slender Man on acid with uh, very sharp fingers yes. and toes Yeah, and like a body. longer. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was the night before, you know? Uh, we leave the uh, the flu in the chimney open so he can come down safely yep. Yep. and uh, discreetly yeah. and frighten our children. Yeah. Do we need to maybe, um, do we need to kind of refresh people on what the origins and like the story of Jimmy Tree Legs uh, a little bit or yes, no? Yes, 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 yes. Or do we just assume that everyone kind of knows? Eastern Europe. Uh, he's Eastern European descent. Jimmy sure. Tree Legs, obviously. Sure. Uh, some some people say the 16th century, right? Um, and uh, it was December 16th that America decided to celebrate Pinecone Day, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is a holiday uh, about 10 days before Christmas that is actually meant to frighten children right. uh, into believing in Christmas. And uh, you know, it's a guy out in the woods, mm-hmm. uh, very lonely, made of pine cones, and he comes in to haunt. Uh, children and uh, parents alike. Yeah. Every mostly, single December 16th. Yeah, mostly children mm-hmm. and leaves sort of um, real pine cones, which if anyone knows, like a dried real pine cone is very sharp. Yeah. Very, yeah. can cut yourself, lots of things like this. So you leave them under your kid's pillows, right? Pillows and then you put them all over the, the floor. All over the floor. So when they get scared yeah. of Jimmy Tree Legs coming to their window and kind of rapping, you know what I mean? Rapping on the window. Yeah. It's just us, right? With some like oh, it's not rooms us. No, and it's stuff. Not, it's definitely like, not us. It's Jimmy himself. Come on. But the come kids on. jump out of bed. They step all over the pine cones. Yeah. They're in worse pain than they were before. Yeah. And the whole night is, uh, is so full of fear. Fun. We so take fun. all the light bulbs out in the house mm-hmm. too. Um, so, so they dark. can't find anything. Yeah. And then it's just like um, everywhere they step is a pine cone. And that's fun <laughs> for them. And it's a fun little game. It's like the floor is lava. But it's more just like blood and stuff. And so it's just so it's so great. And yes. it, the origins yeah. did sort of come from us being like, you know, we don't really. It was kind of the fake Mexican thing. We're like, we don't really have like this real pine cone tradition pie. of like you know white people's traditions are just fucking boring right what like, happened was i got tired of every day being something day like right. no, no matter what it's something day right ice cream day puppy day uh strangulation day whatever your day is i sure. get i get tired of it and i was like man what are we gonna do on december 16th what is it pine cone day we're just gonna celebrate that with a fake man named Jimmy Tree Legs that, that comes down the chimney and frightens children um, right. because I'm tired of the days. Like today has got to be something. Hot Bob, l- look up what today is. I guarantee you they've got a name for today, whatever that is. Um, and, and you know, we wanted to have some kind of family tradition that was just ours. Yes. What, it, what, what is it, Hot Bob? What do we got? Uh... <laughs> Jesus, uh, it's Bill of Rights Day. That's kind of interesting. That's ah, kind of neat. Bill of Rights, you don't That's say. That's super neat. It's also <laughs> National Cat Herders Day. National Cat Herders Day, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Let's see, I, I can get the full list here. Shout out to all my CHs out there, dude, who uh, yeah. don't get enough love around the world, the oh, cat yeah. herders. National Cupcake Day. Oh, National Cupcake oh, Day. Oh, now here we go. Here we go. That's something I can mm-hmm. get behind. I'd smash one all over my ding-dong parts. Mm-hmm. National, yeah. uh, Jave, unfortunately, you didn't. You declined to celebrate this. National Wear Your Pearls Day. National oh, Wear Your Pearls Day, you don't it. say. 
And then Look International Tea Day to bring tea? the whole world together. Tea. Tea. Like hot tea? Like hot tea. Yeah. Uh, the hot, nothing like, like hot tea and cupcakes. You to lost start me. The Everything day was great before tea yeah. day. You really, uh, um, you really beefed us on that. <laughs> Uh, but to, to the When's millions of day? you out, uh, out there around the world celebrating Pinecone Day, uh, we are with you. Twas the night before Pinecone Day. Next year, we're going to get some uh, sweet teas made up from Pinecone Day. Just it's called I Survived Pinecone Day. Because yes. if you live through it, you live through it. Um, but due to COVID, it was a little tough to get anything this year, tree-wise That's or all true. that other stuff. But we will appreciate, um, as we do every year, uh-huh. any of your... Um, Pinecone Day celebration yep. picks yep. and anything you want to send in. I love posting those on the actual day. So, And ha- hammer celebrate. the like button if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, we we're will. having a real hard time with these guys. Um, with, it, with YouTube, yeah. Oh, wow. uh, we heard there was, what, 15 ads on last night's Drinking Bros show? Uh, yeah, guys, there's a ton of ads. Uh, when I went back to look at it, I can now, uh, delete those and, uh, limit those ads for you. So I'm going to go back and check after every live video and, uh, make sure there's a very limited number of ads for you guys from now on. I can't hear you in the headphones, but you're live on the, uh, on the YouTube. Okay, cool. Um, uh, and all the, the, the ads are like far left ads and something like that. Like, dude, we have zero control over any of this. Um, I know this. I know with YouTube, our watch time is higher than almost any, per video, higher than almost any channel there is. And uh, they refuse to, like, not shadow ban or not, put, I don't know, promote it everywhere else. Like, it's it's strange, but then they'll fill it up with ads, and, like, we have zero control over that. Um, I don't know if it will ever change, to be honest with you. Uh, hopefully, the Spotify thing will open up so we can put our videos on there. And I don't necessarily want to do a deal with Spotify, um, but I would like the option to upload the videos there. I know mm. it was, we, we used to do it on iTunes with the show. We were like the very first yeah. ones. And we were like number two or three in the world uh, for a couple years, um, but no one else was uploading to iTunes. So uh, I'm not sure um, what's going to happen with that, but we have zero control out of all of this, to be honest with you. And uh, sure. it is what it is, but I, w- I want to apologize for yesterday. We, we don't get to see it. So like we're, we're doing the show and then we put it out. Yeah. We have no control over that. And yeah. Uh, yeah. So Giorgio is going to try and fix that for you guys. We'll I mean, try to do something. I, I, Cause you had said uh, your brother had called and said, Hey, why don't you demonetize all the videos? Just no ads whatsoever. Um, what I had read though, was they don't, they won't put your, at your, videos up and suggestions for everywhere because they're not making money off of you anymore they won't but it feels like you may get a real number so i don't know yeah strange strange i guess Either there's way. two there's two schools of thought of that right where if they don't have to worry about what you're saying right they just let you do whatever if they're trying to actually make money from you mm-hmm. that's when they're kind of on your ass i don't know that's more logical than probably it actually works so yeah uh, we have no idea. We, we had a guy on who was talking about, um, you know, how the government needs to break up the, the, there's gotta be an antitrust suit against all these guys. And I know there is one against Google now, but man, I, that's a different world for me. Like, I don't think any of that shit's going to get stopped to be honest with you. No, it's just, it's only going to get worse. Yeah. Um, because like the info they're finding out about Facebook, like there's a trend right now of people quitting Facebook, these, these employees, and then writing these manifestos. Like serial killers. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, look, not every manifesto is a hot is Bob, a Dorner, pull, but so, but sort of pull up the last one, the, the Facebook employee that just quit uh, last week and then just went scorched earth on everyone. You you hot, Jabes? I am. Yeah, keep it on a single on Jabes. Maybe that'll get some eyeballs. Look at that. Uh, yeah, take that jacket off, baby. Take it off, me, baby. Take it off, baby. Yeah, dude. Ooh. Uh, what? what you getting like? a little hot on Pinecone Day today, I really James. am. I get so excited. Yeah, it's you do. It's my favorite thing. Yeah. Uh, did you see the, the, the Facebook one, Hot Bob? Uh, I found one from September. That seems to be the big, the big one showing up in the news. Uh, Facebook worker quits and disgusts, says companies on the wrong side of history. It's uh, oh, gonna, Yeah, uh, so they're, so they're, all, look, they're, they're the, all doing the same thing, yeah. by the way. So it's all in this vein. And I guess it was started by this one guy and then everybody else is like, F you, we're all done with this and here's what's happening and it's controlling our lives and 
it's going to end. Well, the social oh, dilemma existence. was kind of all about that, right? So all of those were like defectors of different places, Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, right? What was the other one, Bum? This one just came up from a couple, like two days ago. Uh, after the U.S. election, people are leaving Facebook because of, uh, one person said because of the hate speech that they're failing That's to. That's it. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yeah. It's failing to uh, curb somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with all of it, though, it's like, dude, Zuckerberg owns what? WhatsApp. I didn't know he owned, he owned WhatsApp as well. Yeah. Dude, WhatsApp, Instagram, and Facebook. Like, they. My thing control is our like world. The, the like definition of monopoly, right? Is that you like buy up all your competitors, correct? So that you don't have any competition, you yeah. own the space. Yep. But they've been doing that forever. Forever. And yeah. we're like, oh, they bought fucking Vine or they bought Instagram or whatever. Or they're doing Reels now or what? You know. So yeah. So because now Instagram is trying to eliminate uh, TikTok with this Reels thing, which sucks, by the way. Right. So they bully or they, you know, intimidate them by just doing their fucking platform until they finally agree to. They just do shittier versions of the apps that you actually like, and then somehow bully them into fucking buying them out and right it's strange the whole thing's fucking strange but uh we don't have to get into that too much today fuck them um we're, we're gonna do the same show day in and day out uh really don't care really don't care uh however it would be nice if if people could find it and didn't have to type in exact keywords and everything else because you know that hardback is still not up for uh as the sun rises it dawns on them yet Mm-mm. it will be after the week is over when the new york times list uh new sure, york times bestseller list magically Yep. Magically. So as that goes on, uh, that'll be the, you know, that'll pop back up magically and it'll be right there and it'll be like, oh, hey, we had that hardback all along now that you're, you can't make the New York Times bestseller list. Exactly. Fuck you, dude. I know the games. I know the tricks. And I don't care. We've been through this before. Yeah. I don't give a shit. So uh, it is what it is. I already made it now. So I, I know the numbers. Yes, I would have made it again. This would have been my third in a row. So, what the fuck ever, dude? Um, I'm the greatest. I, don't, I already know that. Yeah. I know that, baby. Uh, speaking of the greatest, you guys got to see the greatest um, on what Friday night. So we want to thanks to the people. Yes, we want to give a shout out to the nooners here. Um, we'll cut to you guys here because um, what happened was uh, after we did that show, I said, "Look, I'll donate half." And send you the other half to send uh, the two of you to the show. It was going to be Giorgio and Fake Dan. Uh, Fake Dan was fretting about um, his girlfriend never talking to him again. I don't know. He wasn't too bothered, for- but yeah. He didn't pick up the microphone once that show. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he was like, shit happens. <laughs> no. He was, he was real fucking sad about it. And uh, anyways, as soon as the show ended, I get a call from a listener um, that said, hey, I want to be anonymous. But I, I want to give you uh, some money to send the other guys to the show. And uh, so it was amazing. The only problem was after the show was over, there was four tickets because of COVID. Right. Um, there was four tickets in the front row at a table. And I said, look, I will leave it up to Giorgio and Dan, who you guys want to take as your fourth. Pan to you guys. Who would you guys end up uh, taking? Uh, we took Kylie, which is uh, Dan's girlfriend. Yeah, we you took, did. Uh, we, you we took a uh, hot Bob over here. Um, for all you... Listeners who also watch the UFC fights, though, I know we got some diehard listeners in the boards mm-hmm. right now. Did I make the right decision not taking that blonde? And that's what I really <laughs> want to know. So just let me know in the comments section. Actually, you're the only one with the answer on that. Uh, how, right. did, how did it end up with the blonde? Oh, it ended up great. She had a good time. Um, I think the did more intimate moments, time? though, were between me and Dave on stage. When he looked sure. over at me, we caught eye contact for a little bit. And it was a good 30 seconds. And like, he kind of gave me one of these head nods when I was like, yeah. I know you're looking at me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Would I don't you think it was the same vibe you were <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we saw a glance over and Giorgio felt the ten minutes like Yeah. It's like any it's other like, why love is this story. Kid staring at me like intensely. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I don't Giorgio, and this is this is being dead serious. Unless you had like a, a hardcore girlfriend, you know, like like Dan or, or like I don't think just bringing a a rando to that show because you were probably so into it would you even notice a girl was even at the fucking table at that point oh completely not but uh, i yeah. did have a raging boner the whole time it, four dudes though oh completely yeah yes four yes. dudes and that would have been no boins no boins no boins so h- how was it by the way because I, I i discussed it on the show and like 
I don't know. Sometimes, man, you feel like braggy or like weird talking about like past experiences of like, holy shit, there was this fucking thing that was incredible that you'll never believe that happened. Like you don't feel that way. I, I do. Oh. Where, where it's like sometimes because you're like, man, I, it, it seems so unbelievable unless somebody else went to it. Because there's only five of these goddamn things. Um, how crazy was that, that experience for you guys? Right, but with COVID, I feel like people actually want to hear about your stories because they're yeah, true. bored out of their minds. Right, so uh, having heard mine and then you guys went right afterwards. It was the best uh, night of my life. Yes. Easily the best night of my life. Uh, Dave had just a bottom grill in, full diamond out. Like complete. Chappelle did? Yeah, yeah. It was amazing. <laughs> like, uh, it, was, it was the most elegant grill that I'd ever seen. And uh, he did about 45 minutes of trans jokes. <laughs> okay. He went on him hard. So same. Yeah, 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 yeah. He yeah. also has a hit list. So he got blackout drunk on stage, like stumbling, like had a hard time standing drunk. And like he walks off and is muttering to himself a little bit. He's like, I got those industry motherfuckers. I'm coming for y'all next. And it's like he has this like hit list in his head of everyone who's ever wronged him. And he's coming for them. And it just made me love him more. That, that, that's the way I felt as well, where it was just like, oh, all right, cool. Because when you get rich enough, and we've talked about this on this show a million times, when you get rich enough that you're above agents, managers, lawyers, all that other shit, that's the true freedom. And so when, when you see a show like that, um, with, in particular, those two guys, Rogan and Chappelle, I mean, that's the ultimate like, freedom of like, hey, fuck you. They, Dave gave a long speech about Joe's importance to comedy, about Joe's importance to like everything going on right now and how self-distribution is the way to go. How we no longer have the gatekeepers, how we can tell absolutely everyone to go F themselves and like this is a great time to be a comedian or be in comedy right now. See, what, what that doesn't get across though is that Dave gave that speech at the end while he was blackout drunk. <laughs> right. Right. So it came across as like, man, you just like, it's like his best friend. He's like, I just love you. You just, you're just the best man. You're so cool and <laughs> smart. Dude, we should have a TV show yes. together. <laughs> People would fucking watch that shit, yep. dude. And then when they did like news stories uh, towards the end, I think they did it with you guys as well. Yeah. yeah. Where they yeah. just had the uh, the Haitian guy read yes. headlines, which you couldn't really understand because of his accent. Sure. Joe was having a hard time with that. Right. Uh, Dave would just kind of like contribute. And then Joe just kind of stood there in silence. And yes. he's like, he's like, I don't know what to say. Well, he's not an improv guy. No. And, he's uh, like, you know, it is what it is, but it, it, it's the whole thing to me felt like a family atmosphere. Everybody was friends. Everybody was fucked up. We're all making fun of the homeless, like a block away. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I know. Right. <laughs> How fun. How fun. She's like a bunch of rich people yeah. making fun of. Um, Dave did, Chappelle though was saying it loud enough into the microphone. He goes, "I hope these motherfuckers can hear me. Know, My so belly is full." Funny, <laughs> um, so funny. Yep, full of barbecue, right? Thing. Yeah, yeah. Full uh, of barbecue. Yeah. We had Tony Hinchcliffe, right? I think that's his name. Yeah, yeah, Tony Hinchcliffe. Yeah, not a big fan, but he actually had a good set. I told you, dude. Okay, so but only like it was like seven minutes. He was right. the opener. Yeah, and then, uh, it's like you can't really fuck up seven minutes, can you? No, uh, you could. No, you those can, are your best. Yes things right uh it's, um, it's tough at the beginning because look you guys did the the swab down the nose and all that shit yeah, yeah that was my first it same same yeah. it was my first time too it, it's so awful that like you're kind of jarred for like an hour so the opening acts like yes you can fuck that up because a lot of people were uncomfortable still when you sat down because you're still getting used to you know whatever that thing was in the back of your fucking brain um but uh yeah you can fuck it up we but saw I, like I a 40 year old woman throw a hissy fit about it that was sick. We saw it. Oh, shit. We didn't oh, tell this we story. Saw we saw a guy, a grown man cry, like sit down, ask for a stool. They need to give him a stool. His There was a like hot girl with him that had to be like, she had just gotten it. Had yeah. to be like, are you okay? Like, are you going to make it? And he was just like sweating. He's like, breathing he must, heavy. He must have been super fucked up. But Had to have been. Yeah. Had um, to have been. Did you guys sing a song at the end? Like all together? No. No, no songs. Okay. No. Uh, but it was it was the greatest night of all time, though, right? Like it's amazing. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, yeah. I got and to make eye contact with my heroes. It was amazing. Uh, did, did you, I'm gonna I'm gonna remember that. We went all so in on the uh, the pictures of Moscow meals. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which I feel like they didn't put any booze in, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we went Probably for all the best. in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would, would if that was a real Moscow mule, I would have been fucking puking on Joe Rogan. <laughs> right, right. So you're like, I feel good. This is weird. Um, I did say when Tony Hinchcliffe came out, like they were like, oh Tony, and I was like, I paid too much money to see this motherfucker. Like 
I don't like him. And then I was like, God damn it. He's great. He's a great fucking And he set, moved to but Austin. You're right. So it's tight. It's a tight set. Like. Look, yeah, those are hard, man. I'm telling you. Um, I, and yeah, we're not huge fans, but I was after that. I was like, all right, great. I don't, I'll, I don't know what the, I don't know what the rest of his life is. I have no idea. Uh, but, uh, that set was great. Um, I'm glad you guys got to do it. Shout out to the Nooners who made this Thank happen you guys. And, and I did love when I heard, uh, I was like, who's Giorgio taking? And you were like, he said, we're a team. I'm going to take hot Bob. I was like, Oh my yeah. gosh. Cause that's what I was wanting. So what a sweetie pie. I didn't want to get, know. I didn't want to get in the way of him getting laid. Sure. But you know, I <laughs> but I think it. it was the best situation. Yeah, I gave him a little I rub under too. the table. Yeah. And, for the, you. and the other thing is for real, like Giorgio, because I, I know you're such a huge fan of Chappelle and Rogan and it's like, you wouldn't have noticed that a girl was at your fucking table and, and you don't want to put up with that bullshit all night either, you know? I did come away from that show with a lot of sexual energy, though. Yeah. Did you go to her house or what happened? I mean, she was staying at my house. Oh, okay. Yeah. She also did the UFC show. So yeah. You, yeah. You had a yeah, yeah, yeah. that weekend, right? Yeah. She's yeah. fine. I thought it was fun, man. I So if you're not subscribed to Drinking Bros Sports, it's a separate channel that we just started a couple weeks ago. I enjoy when you guys do those live reaction shows. And then, because I popped it on, we were at the house yeah. and uh, and I was watching. And you're like, who are those people there? And I was like, yeah. who knows? But it's it's hilarious but and it's, it's awesome. Yeah, it's like, holy I'm gonna shit. I'm going to start having local Austin comics guest star the whole time. Because I mean, oh, why not? Great. Come on in. Yeah, yeah. Bring it in. It's going to start being a party. Yeah. Uh, and then speaking of which, this Saturday, we are going live all day long on Drinking Bros Sports. Uh, Jesse and I will be doing the first game uh, with, with the rest of these homeboys um it is ohio state versus northwestern so it's, it's at 11 a.m so we should be starting early yeah um woo. i'll be rooting for northwestern no, and no, me and not. georgia Joking. will be here all day and uh closing out with ufc fight night oh yeah my it's, gosh. It's, it's, it's it is literally the greatest day and night in sports um what a fun boy party so it's championship Happy to be a part of championship it. saturday so all the championship games are that day and then who's the ufc fight that night uh, we have uh, Wonder Boy. Oh, oh shit! Nice. Is fighting. Uh, I think is Calvin Cater fighting. Is that next week, Giorgio? Uh, yeah, I believe it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wonder, but Wonder Boy would be great. So you're gonna end yeah, with that. Fun, Holy night. shit, dude! What a great night. Great um, day. Man, damn it. So yeah, subscribe to Drinking Bros Sports uh, on YouTube. They don't flag that because it's sports, I guess. And they're like, oh, hey, they can't talk about COVID or politics over there. You yeah, know? we're getting subscribers every day, and I really appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, what the fuck, dude? You wanted to just have a small little channel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, it's great. Um, so, so go there, and then, uh, yeah, we'll be doing the first game and then drinking with you guys all day on that. That'll be fun. Uh, you know what else was fun was uh, we watched that Bee Gees doc last night. We did. Bam, 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 bam. Uh, fucking A, dude. Um, I, I enjoyed it. it up. Yeah. yeah. The the teeth, though. I It just, I could not let it go, the Bee Gees teeth. You really couldn't. At a certain point, I had to be like, you have to just accept that that's their teeth because we can't have the conversation every scene, right? It, it, it's the, the veneers on two out of the three brothers, right? The third just kept his real huge, gigantic teeth. Um, po yeah. Pop up a... That was so. This was after they got all. They so all got veneers. So this is all the veneers. But look, they right. come by this honestly. You if you screen. see them back in the day, those teeth are just as huge and just as protruding. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but I was unaware of their whole story and their whole sitch. And as we were watching it, I was like, "Shit, I didn't know they had any hits before, like Saturday Night Live, yeah. album, and all that stuff." If you don't know the Bee Gees, you Fever, yeah. or Saturday Night Fever, I'm sorry, but uh, if you don't know the Bee Gees, clearly you you live under a fucking rock. And uh, I mean, everyone knows one would think. Right. right? Um, but, you know, I, they haven't had a hit since the 70s. So who knows? Mm, um, well, what I didn't know what was interesting was they were writing uh, songs after like after the crash and after the disco is dead shit. They, they just started writing songs for everybody else. Yeah. Islands in the stream. I know. Rogers. Yeah, that, that was one that I was like, you fucking win, dude. Yeah. yeah. So. Ugh. Um, there, it was a, it's Still, a, it's uh, a fantastic doc. And like, um, it was interesting because E claps, uh, Eric Clapton, as he's known in the biz, E claps Coke dog, dude. Yeah. Coke dog millionaire. Old Coke dog millionaire. Best yeah. ever do it. But one really. of the very best to ever do it. Best to ever do it. Um, he was the one that told them to go to Miami and said, Hey man, 
I just finished recording an album down there. It's dope. You guys should go. And when they were there, that was kind of like the, the Coke nightclub. Miami Sound. Dude. Yes. Yeah. And they incorporated that into Saturday Night Fever and boom, they exploded. I, I feel like that album made cocaine cool and acceptable. Like, hey, we can do this out everywhere mm-hmm. and share this at parties and, uh, and it's fun. Sure. Rather than like a dirty basement type of sitch where you're doing it in an alley. If, you're, if, you, if you take away one thing from this documentary is that the Bee Gees made cocaine fun. Yeah, that if you're rich and white, cocaine can be s- Very swell. fun, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It's when you don't have the money to get it that it goes yeah. terribly wrong. But gosh, what a fun time if you've got money and time to yeah. spend, right? And that falsetto is just... Uh, and, and everybody, everybody was just like, I don't know how that guy got his voice that that high ever um and still the, confused about the andy gibb barry <laughs> gibb confusion uh which i used to confuse them so was andy gibb in the band uh no no ever. he was a solo artist and okay. then he was you know they would put he him would in and pop a, in and out pop in and out yeah best looking one yeah it's a shame yeah well i i don't know barry gibb to me um, uh andy with, gibb was the best looking one and Barry Gibb was a knockoff of him which is why you would be like is that Andy Barry what I'm talking it up yeah I mean I'm look it up. how yeah how did he uh he, cause he died at like age 30 all of them then ended up fucking kicking there's only one left I believe I think Barry's the yeah, only Barry's one yeah Barry's the alive. strongest tallest one that's how it goes yeah he had the best pull with up a picture of, of him with <laughs> feathered hair and uh of who Barry Gibb Barry or Andy okay no Barry um this is the this is the look that you hope to achieve in life, but uh, never can. Yeah, let's go. There we go. Look at that. Put that up on screen. Uh, either Ooh, either or. Or the third over with the white collar. Yeah. Ooh, wind oh, in there. look at that. Let's go full screen with that. Oh, my gosh. Uh, can you do ooh. a Barry Gibb with ooh. your hair as your next, like, bet or something? Yes. Yes. Easily. Is, is, that, is that a perm in there, Jesse? It's a body wave, yeah. Oh, it's a body wave. Okay. Yeah. For, so for long hair, mm-hmm. faux show. Um, the only problem is the beard, man. I, I can't. You I can grow on the stash. The it's real patchy on the sides. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I could definitely do that for sure, man. And it will be kind of like a blowout everyday situation. Oof. I know. Is that, does that take a while? It does. But look, you're just going to do it a couple times and then cut it, right? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Premium content. That's you never how you know. do all of this. You never <laughs> You never know, James. It could be my look, you know, one that mm-hmm. I settle into. Sure. I think what I'm eventually going to settle into is... Uh, Three Dog Night, I hope. Yes. Um, but, but I think it's going to be Sam Elliott. Like, yeah. I think I was born to have a permanent mustache mm-hmm. at a certain point in life. Um, and I think it's like, you know, 20 years where it's like, all right, great. That's my look for the rest of my life where it's... Right. I got this mustache and this long hair and that's it, right? Because I got a fucking salad on. Sure. My my dome. It'd be a shame if I didn't exploit it. Um, but usually, you know, you and I do a bunch of crazy shit, and then we celebrate Pinecone Day, and it's all covered up with a little beanie. Bing, 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 bing. But check out that doc. It's it's uh, it's really fun, man. There's been some great shit on lately. Um, where I'm like, all right, yeah, yeah, baby. And all this shit that was supposed to come out in theaters is now coming like to streaming. I didn't I didn't know about the, the Tom Hanks fucking war movie that looked yeah. dope as shit hmm. you don't think that looks sweet i mean i don't i don't know clooney was on this morning talking about the fucking space movie that looks dope that one looks good um yeah. francis mcdormand's in this movie uh pull up uh, pull up the francis mcdormand movie and i know what you're gonna say about hanks and i feel the same way every time i look at him i don't know and it, it weirds me out mm. yeah i just feel like he should own like a typewriter shop an old typewriter repair shop and like yeah, no, Nomadland is the name of that movie, life. by the way. Um, but uh, everybody says she's going to win the Oscar for this. I don't know how they're going to do this shit. I just watched a preview um, for the Golden Globes, right? And it's going to be virtual where nobody's in the room. But they are going to have hosts in the room and all sure. that shit. Like, uh, I don't know what's going to happen with the vaccination. but uh, Yeah, because somebody article, died from the last super spreader, CMAs. Sorry about it. Yeah, uh, RIP Charlie Pride. Got to meet Charlie as a kid. Uh, great man. Um, that Yeah, this Frances McDormand movie, everyone says she is a lock. 
an, uh, like an automatic lock now that the Jennifer Hudson movie got pushed till next year. Yeah. Because she was, she's playing Aretha Franklin. That, this, that Frances McDormand is a lock for the Oscar. This is what Hillbilly Elegy should have been kind of thing? I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. People on the Hillbilly Elegy tip have been just raging, by the way. It's the worst movie of all time. It's the worst movie, but most... Did you watch it? No, but most of what I'm hearing... It, I mean, I will at some point, but most of what I'm hearing is that it's like a really hard... Uh, against Trump supporters and uh, making it seem like... Trying to make them sympathetic and people are hating that. They're oh, hating the Trump that supporters are... They're trying to make Trump, you know conservative right whatever right. a sympathetic figure and oh, people gotcha, like gotcha, do gotcha. not want that to happen yeah, like you yeah, cannot yeah. try and envision their life and what they've been through mm -hmm. and what's making them you know believe in the things they believe in or politically leaning like you can't do that you have to just Oof. be like you're dumb get out of here i don't want to see you mcconaughey matthew mcconaughey had a good uh speech about it the other day um on russell brand's podcast and i shit he went on another show and talked about it too where he was just like look man it is not 50-50 and you have to kill each other if you're on the other side. Jesus Christ. Like, yeah. Um, uh, but that's where we're at. So it doesn't really matter. Because uh, you and I watched the Joe Biden speech last night. Yeah. Um, immediately looking. I, 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 the guy is invisible. Like completely invisible. Mm -hmm. Do you know that what he wasn't even trending on Twitter at all? No. Live. He, he goes live on air. Coughed until he was about to pass out mm -hmm. to try to get through this speech and you're like jesus christ you were screaming at the tv get somebody get joe some Just water get him some water why does he not have water under i don't know the i don't podium? know like i don't know it's, um but it's the strangest thing ever like dude the president of the united states isn't even trending for announcing that he won the electoral college like I, i've never seen anything like what's going on um one would would think they would push that to the the top or people would be talking about it nobody said a fucking word well i've seen this before and it's an any other presidential um, election, right? Where it was just kind of boring. So we're back to that. It's not trending. Well, spe speaking of which, uh, MSNBC is behind the scenes now asking what they're going to do. Uh, their ratings have crashed. And, and uh, I don't know if they're going to be a network very much longer. Four, they can't sustain four years of that. Right. So uh, somebody's going to probably pick off Rachel Maddow and then she'll go somewhere else. But uh I don't think they're, they'll be able to sustain what they're about to go through and uh, boo-hoo, you know? Sure. Um, but yeah. All those guys, I don't know what they're going to do. I was fine with the speech. Like I said, it was boring. Back to business as usual. I, just to, he, he was just coughing so much that it was so yeah, distracting. Yeah, if there was no like, coughing, I think it would have just been a pretty normal... Will know, he be alive on Inauguration Day? I have no idea. Uh, I don't know. I mean, we're... That's I don't know. And I was thinking away. about like what the laws would be with that, so... Would it go to Kamala if it yes. happened before inauguration? Yes, 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 it would. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it would go to her, and uh, you know, uh, he did not look great. So whatever the fuck he's going through, like seventy-eight years old. Who knows, man? Sure. He'll be seventy-nine during the inauguration. So it's yeah. like, what the fuck? Um, there was a really funny thing that happened to us uh, a couple of days ago over the weekend with uh, Shia LaBeouf. By the way, <laughs> um, somebody trying to click in over there. No? no, no. Oh, okay. Um, I, uh, I heard, no, I hear though. I hear a mic. I heard it click in. Um, with uh, Shia LaBeouf, I follow this account called Shia's Outfits. Yeah. It's like super silly. Dumb. They just follow him in his weird clothes. In his weird and clothes sort of and make fun of him and yeah. whatever. It's a, it's a joke page for sure. Well, we thought it was. And then Shia, it, the, this girl ends up su su suing uh, Shia LaBeouf, FKA Twigs, um, mm -hmm. which we found out on Drinking Bros was formerly known as Twigs. Yes, and was in Honey Boy, by the way. Oh, really? She was the prostitute that slept with the kid. Ah, uh, she was the prostitute. Man, she was a great prostitute. She was really good. And, like, she's, she's great. Good. She's she's great good. prostitute. Yeah. All right, well, shit. She knows what the fuck his life is then. Um, so, anyways, I, po I posted on there. They were like, they posted a thing on, on Shia's outfits. Um, that they were like, we, we stand with FKA Twigs and we're not going to do this anymore and mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if they're, they're going to do the site anymore. Um, but, whoa. I think okay. they will. Um, but with that, um, I posted, I was like, so you're not going to post the outfit that Shia beat her in? Or like, we're, we're, we're just not going to do that? People 
there was some fans of Shia LaBeouf, I guess, that were just like, oh, this is so wrong. This is abuse. And then they, they reached out to you and asked you if you were okay. <laughs> yeah, so they were offended by that, which I get that, right? I get that's not a great response to a woman being beaten. Here's now listen, or if she was beaten or whatever it is, abuse, whatever. Um, and so they reached out to me and were like, are you okay? You married this piece of shit. I hope he doesn't beat you. And then they went a step further, which I just, I always just do like laughing emojis cause I never engage with anything like that. So I just go, thank you. Thanks for your, you know, thank you for your whatever support or whatever and a laughy face. And, um, they finally started going through my actual Instagram and there's a picture of my son in a nun outfit because he <laughs> likes to, I don't know what his deal is, but he's super cool. And he he's likes an evil nun. Well, he likes horror films. Horror I, films. I, I, and he like yeah. doesn't give a shit what anybody But he also like about. creates his own character. So like, right. I don't know what character this was. I don't know what the something. evil nun was, but yeah, was whatever. Really so funny. I got this girl's nun outfit. It's the only thing that would fit him, his yeah. little body. And um, so there's a picture of that. And I ho- um, somebody that was talking shit to me on the shia's outfit went to my instagram and (laughs) put under the picture um this is horrible i hope this never happens to your daughter and i was like oh do you think this is my daughter (laughs) i was like look it's okay i mean i go i hope i'm really glad that you're not taking the account shia's outfits too seriously because that would be fucking insane um again i don't condone that comment But it wasn't me that made it. It's you. Yeah. It's fine. You were joking on a joke page, whatever it is. Yeah, it's a a joke page on a joke thing. And like, uh, here's the issue I have with it. Um, Going back to the Me Too shit with Harvey Weinstein. We all fucking knew, right? Mm -hmm. I knew about Weinstein. I knew about Spacey. I knew about all these guys. And uh, uh, with Shia LaBeouf, it was the same way. I know he's been in crazy relationships. Um, he almost got his fucking hand chopped off in a car accident when he was all fucked up with a girl. Like, right. he's been like this forever. Um, and he's been re- arrested 50 fucking times before that account was even started on Shia's outfits. So if you didn't know who Shia LaBeouf was and you live in Hollywood and you started that page, probably time to examine your own real life and, uh, and think yeah. that it was like an innocent, fun, like Shia, Shia LaBeouf's a fun, flirty guy. No, he pulled a tooth out for a movie. Um, he pulled a tooth mouth. Have you seen, if you've ever seen Honey Boy, you can just totally understand his whole life and that he's not going to be the most well-adjusted no. person and he can go through therapy and get there or whatever. Um, going through her statements of what happened, you know, who hasn't been on a Romeo and Juliet death ride? I've been taken on two in my life. Really? Yeah. Where, where people are like, I'm going to fucking kill you? If you don't blah, 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 say, so what he did to her was like, if you don't say that you love me or whatever, I'm going to crash this car and like driving super erratically. That's happened two times to me. Like everybody has that story. Wow. No, no, no one has that story. I've never done that to anyone. But people people that I've gotten involved with, I knew that like they were a Shia, like super talented, super weird, damaged, crazy, right? Uh And so not that I'm taking responsibility for it, but I put it in different categories where like I got involved with the fucking crazy people. Sure. Right. But there are, as far as domestic violence and things like that, there are people that are actually stuck in like marriages with kids in poverty where like they literally cannot get out of this situation. Sure. FKA Twigs, you know, was in an abuse, you know, in a crazy abusive relationship with a crazy, well-known, crazy damaged dude. Right. That we all love to watch on tv right yeah um but actually we found out recently even before this that he's actually like that all the time right and we all sort of knew that did we i feel like every he would get arrested on every film and hold up production yeah, yeah. I, look, and he was I, a I'm, nightmare he, he, and like he is and like i'm i'm joking with you um the thing right. on, the thing on shia's page that somebody wrote was hey man i thought we were supposed to believe all women which you guys are we didn't see you post a picture of tara reed for joe biden um, so we're not believing that either. And I was like, it must've been somebody who listens to the show or something right. or whatever, but it was really funny, but that's it, the, that's the truth too. All these pages and people decide who they're, you know, Oh, we like them because they're fun and we like them as an actor or whatever versus who they are in real life. What you were saying, we all know fucking Shia LaBeouf, like right. it's been arrested 50 fucking times, man, for the wildest shit on the planet. Like, yeah. And nothing is her fault, but look like. Again, I've been on two of those rides. I yeah. learned from it. 
And I got out of it being like, what the fuck did I expect was going to fuck? You go, oh, okay, well, this is really how yeah. he is. There's no like, this is me sometimes and this is me another time. Like, that's really how it is. And um, there are people that as far as domestic abuse and do not have the means and do not have the anything to actually sue mm-hmm. your abuser, right? Like, which it's only in civil uh, court that she can do that. And it's just sort of like it's fine you know she's doing what she has to do and then Sia I don't even know they fucking dated conned Sia so she Shia conned Sia into a adulterous relationship which neither of them were married neither of them have kids so it was like he was cheating on a girlfriend with a girlfriend and Sia didn't know about it whatever well you saw the video right where they met yeah that he was on her video Yeah, 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 yeah 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 Um, so as soon as I saw that video, I was like, oh, they're going to end up fucking. Right. Like I was like, oh, they'll, they'll be fucking like that's easy. Sure. Um, now when you said the people that you were with in the car, the two people mm-hmm. were talented, mm. uh, did they ever write like a New York times bestseller or anything like no, that? No, no, no. Not like, so not they weren't talented, that talented. talented. Okay, cool. Like I just want to make, I just want to make sure they Here's... weren't more talented. Okay. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. No. Cool. When I say talented, I mean like lots of ideas, right? Lots of coked out ideas that Uh, sound really fucking good. And I'm like, God damn it, that's good. You'll never do it, (laughs) right? (laughs) But that that kind of mind, right? Shia did all that stuff. I mean, he somehow was able to accomplish certain things while being totally fucking wasted and coked out and all of the things that he is. Uh, most people don't get to that point. He would have just been a crazy, crazy dude talking about got it, all got the it, things got it, got it, got it. he should, you know, would love to do with his buddies sometime, but that never pans out. Cool. Yeah. Again, just making sure. I just wanted to know the level of talent. Like, do, you know, did they write a New York Times bestseller? Do they, were they nominated for an MTV movie award? Like whatever. I just, I want to make sure that, That it's you know, back to you. No, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. No, that is not back to me. <laughs> that they were <laughs> at least less than, you know, like with like less than, you know what I'm saying? Obviously. So, yeah. Well, no, but I'm, I don't know. You could have fucking dated Benicio Del Toro. And I was like, oh shit. I don't know if I can beat Benicio. You would know if I dated Benicio Del Toro. You would love rim jobs for days. Rimmers for Benicio. Oh mm. man. Yes, mm. I would know actually. You would know. Yeah. You can't go through a, a hardcore relationship and not be uh, addicted to, to a little tongue in the ass, you know? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Rimmers. Rimmers for Benicio. Absolutely. I, I will say this though. That's the only bad story. I, I mean, that's not even a bad story. He just loves giving girls rim it's jobs. It's not. It's just a little tidbit. Really. Yeah. yeah. It's just a little something about me. Why don't you do uh, Del Toro's outfits? You know, yeah. switch, switch that account over. Cause you can't find him. <laughs> no, he's not doing shit. No. He'll pop up and do a Christmas uh, campaign for Heineken. That's about it. What was the beer? The, was that, I think it was last Christmas. He was unwrapping fucking 12 packs of beer. Um, for, for somebody, Corona, maybe. We're uh, Google Matt, but I think that's the only person more talented than you that I could think of that she could date. Probably in the whole world. It was, oh, it, was, yeah. uh, it was Heineken. It was Heineken. Look at that. These ads were so fucking weird. Um, money's money, bro. I understand Look at him. It. Look at that guy. Look at him. Eesh. Yeah. Nah, I get it. I get the whole shit, dude, with, with Benicio. Benicio in traffic? Yeah. Good night. <laughs> You're not a you're not a Benicio and Usual Suspects kind of gal. He was too Look, thin I'll take for him Jesse. However, I think. Uh, yeah, he wasn't old enough or fat enough for me. But yeah. like Fear and Loathing, that's my Benicio. <laughs> that's my boy, right? Disgusting, fat, gained all that weight. Yeah, yep, I would have yep, loved yep. to have like prepared for that role with him, <laughs> right? What are we getting tonight? Pizza and subs and beer yeah. and Oreos. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You really have to cap it. Uh, I, I did it once gaining weight for a movie. I will say this. It's fun for like the first two weeks. After that, it's, it's uncomfortable. It's su- yes. It's very uncomfortable. uncomfortable. I'm sure. And you're sweating at night. Like you start sweating being that weight where you're just like, oh fuck, why am I always so goddamn sweaty? And you're like, well, yeah. Started off the day with uh, three mediums from Domino's because it was three for 20 and then had a foot long at night. And, uh, Cap that off with a little uh, eggnog slashed with whatever. I mean, it was crazy. Yeah. Um, I know how you feel. I made a, um, a couple people out of pizza and bagels. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and delivered them. So I get it. Do you know what I mean? Same Z's. Super uncomfortable. Sweating. 
You're fine. Ah, uh, we're fine. <laughs> if you're at home for the holidays and you've eaten too much, you should lie back and just rest on a ghost bed from ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Uh, 30% off for everyone. When you check out with the promo code drinking bros, that's a little trick right now on their website. It says 25% off for us dummy civilians. No, no, no. When you check out, you get 30%. If you type in drinking bros, it's a little holiday trick for you. But if you're a member of the military, a first responder, a teacher, or work in the government, uh, you get 30% off anyways, and you're just better at life. Uh, the rest of us fucking idiots, uh, get a scrounge. Um, but they've got the finest mattresses, pillows, sheets, uh, adjustable bases in the land. Go there. It's not, it's not too late. Uh, just in time for Christmas. And as always, they got a 36-month pay-as-you-go program. No interest at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. So uh, get on it, dude, because all the deals are applicable with that. And uh, it is the greatest night's sleep of all time. You can just zzz, zzz, pop up, dude, in the bed. Fat as shit. Just enjoy your life, dude. Ghostbed dot com forward slash drinking bros next up we got keeps.com forward slash revolution yeah we were talking about it earlier with yeah. the barry gibbs so yeah you being able to do the barry gibbs soon is part in part to keeps due to keeps yeah, yeah. it really has at least thickened or kept everything that you have don't you feel like that's the deal with them um so i, I said look man i would try this to the end of the year if it worked and i felt that it was working I'll, I'll go through, I'll do it. I'll just keep using it for next year. So here we are at the end of the year. Yes, I, 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 it has worked. Um, shit, man. My hair feels thicker. I don't know why. It's kind of strange. Whatever the fuck is in this, uh, I enjoy it. And yeah, for real, I, I, I'm, I don't know. I'm going to use it all next year. I'm like, it's one of those things that's just going to live in my shower now and that's it. Yeah, so, so. you use the champagne champagne and <laughs> shampoo. Yeah. Put a little shampers on my ding Yeah, they have hair loss champagne. It's just a fun thing. Yeah. So, uh, shampoo, which I is wish. more like preventative, but you can also go to keeps.com and chat with a doctor online and there's different things that you can get depending on what your hair loss pattern is yeah um you can get medication shampoo topical all of these things so um delivered to your hair you used to have to go and actually get a prescription for it but just like everything else which i love you can now just talk you to your doctor to they don't ha- you don't have to go in it can just get delivered to you and um preventative pre- prevention is the name of the game right it is uh, go to K-E-E-P-S dot com forward slash revolution. It's keeps dot com forward slash revolution. And uh, look, you, you get a bottle for free. If you like it, it's 10 bucks after that. So uh, is there a better deal? Probably not. Uh, you can't see it underneath my, my pine cone day hat today, but uh, best in the biz, my salad is at an all time high. Uh, last but not least, we got strikeforceenergy.com. <laughs> Boom, 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 boom. Shiboinker. Four amazing flavors. Uh, I am hopped on, up on it as we speak. Uh, oh, right to now. Uh, uh, Strike Force Energy, best in the biz. Um, they got uh, grape, original, lemon, orange. Uh, lasts longer than five hours. It lasts six, dude. It lasts six hours. Yeah. All you do is a tasty, tiny little tin, tin pouch. Rip that open. Squeeze it into any liquid available. And you're good to go. Go to StrikeForceEnergy.com today. 10-pack, 40-pack, 750-milliliter bottle. Use the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. Great stocking stuffer, by the way. So uh, if you're looking to get some fucking energy over the holidays, and I know we are, I've got children. I need to chase around, you know? Sure. (laughs) Uh, Are all the gift spot, Japes? Uh, Yes. Everything that I need delivered in time. Yeah. The only thing I would do is maybe just like a fun trip to like a Target, something like this. Got it, got Get it, got some it. other yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah, but yeah, like yeah. the big okay. stuff that like if you can't find, it is going to be a nightmare. Yeah, it's a nightmare. I have all that. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, I think I've ordered everything. I think everything's there. Um, I made one last purchase last night and it's supposed to get there Monday, so eh, I think we're good. Great. Um, yes, yeah, just some things for the kids where I was just like, all right, cool. Let's do that. Um, and then at Drinking Bros, shit, on that show, we raised like $17,000. No, I, I think it ended up at $20,000. Yeah. Um, and That's uh, what I last heard. And then Dan was dealing with... Amazon. The, yeah. 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 So... Getting that all... Yeah. You can actually. you can plug in and get what you want and, uh, and hit up Dan Holloway. 
Um, it's him and this uh, woman who are in charge of it. You can just buy it right off of Amazon, which is dope. So uh, super amped about that. Um, but yeah, it's it's going to be a ho ho holiday season. Yeah, and then you and I are taking off. Don't just buy it off Amazon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> uh, well, no, it, there's an account for it, but hit Dan okay. up. Yeah, okay. so it goes. The accounts is is we've put the money in there, so yeah, you can yeah. just buy the shit you need for your yeah, children. Yeah. Um, we are going home to North Carolina, the Kakalaki, right? Um, December twenty sixth. We are, and uh, through the second, Japes. We are. It's going to be a weird kind of COVID, non-COVID Christmas because people are getting vaccinations out there, sort right. of. Um, they broke into our news this morning and said that the first vaccinations were being distributed in Austin. Uh, I haven't heard anything about them being distributed in North Carolina, but yeah. Um, I think that they are all everywhere. going. Here's what I have heard. And again, I reported on this a few weeks ago from a paramedic buddy of mine in Nashville. Um, he said the first responders are getting them now in all, in most major cities. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the rest of us dummies will get them if, if, if you're going to take it, I think by April. Yeah. 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 And then, uh, by then I think Moderna, uh, they've passed and I think that's one shot. I think Johnson and Johnson's going to be out too at one shot. So who knows? Uh, I'm going to wait a little bit, you know, uh, I'm, I'm above it. I'm above the law and I don't need it. Well, you don't get it. For a while, anyway. <laughs> I could. I could, Jace. I'm oh, important could? enough that, yeah, sure. they've reached out of like, hey, sure. if you go down, what is our uh, source of entertainment and joy for every single day? Can we please give you the vaccine? Oh, you know? weird. And who, call, who called you? Uh, it was the governor. It was a wheelchair. Oh, Abbott. Yeah, Abbott called. You know, and I heard he was, he was like, dude, I'll roll up to your house and just kind of, you know. Sure. Kind of inject you myself. And I was oh, like, okay. no need. Dick Abbott. Is it Dick? What's his first name? Greg. 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 Yeah. Eh. Not Dick. Dick, Dick Abbott, Abbott sounds fine. Sure. No need Greg. Gregory. Yeah. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. I've had I've had and beaten the COVID. I'm a survivor of it. I do not need your help. You do not need to wheel that wheelchair out in the cold. It's a because it's a brisk day out there today in yeah. Austin. Um, I enjoy it. Um, did you ever hear back from the HOAs, by the way? For for uh, your your the, your gift for next year, yeah. Oh, for the pool, yeah. Um, in talks, I guess they switched heads of the HOA without telling. Oh, that's people. fun. So that's it's, a fun thing. It's just like everything else in life going <laughs> smooth. Everybody's just helping me out. Because I, I mean? think with us, and this is why I wanted to chat about it. Like, you know, for husband and wives, I think when you have children. Christmas becomes less about you and you try to get like one big gift for something for each other, you know? Yeah. And, um, and that's what we're doing for the next year. But we realize that's like a fucking six month process and no way, shape or form is that going to be done when they said it's going to be done. But oh, no, so, no, 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 no. But we like knew that, right? Yes. So, so I'm, not, I'm not even angry about it. Um, I think everyone else in the neighborhood said like, yeah, they started at around the same time and they were good by maybe March next year. All right, good. That's so fine. same timeline, which is like, we're not going to be using it That's anyways yeah. until then. So, uh, and, and not to be like, Oh, Hey, we're fancy people with a pool. Like it, we live in Texas where every fucking house has a pool and we were unaware how hot it was until we moved here. And we were like, Oh man, why is this great house available? With no pool, and that's we and learned. Look, we learned the hard way. We did, and we were always the type to just use other people's pools, <laughs> which are all around us. But with COVID, we just weren't getting invited. No, and and so we were like watching other kids like splash around in the pool when it's like two hundred degrees. So like neighbors, and you're like, yeah, we hey had man. to. Um, so in case something else pops off next year, and I know a lot of people are doing this to their homes, is. They're making their home their destination where it's like, look, I'm going to put a theater in because movie theaters will probably sure. be, be closed after this whole shit's over. Um, pool, whatever, like whatever you can possibly do to not leave your house anymore. It sounds weird, but uh, that's kind of what's happening. Yeah. And um, uh, we yeah, I'm opening opening a uh, winery at my house in your backyard. Yeah. yeah. And a restaurant a la Johnny Depp at his chateau <laughs> because. You still want like everything that you want, right? Right. Like the pool will be fun for the kids, but what about if mom can't leave? You know what I mean? Sure. I just have like, you don't, I don't even really need a real bartender. Like I just need to go into some place, 
be, you know what I mean? Like I, have it kind of be like a restaurant a little bit, even though it's not. Yeah. So we have a wine sponsor on, uh, on drinking bros, try first leaf.com forward yeah. slash drinking bros. I'll give him a shout out. Cause I, I love them. He's one of my very favorites, but this was the first time we've ever had like wine delivered to us. Yeah. Where it was just like, Oh man, you feel so fancy. And you're also oh, like, yeah. you don't have to go anywhere and it's all from other countries. And I was like, shit. Maybe by the end of all of this COVID bullshit, like, uh, we really won't have to go anywhere, James. <laughs> Once again, I really do like going places. But so do yeah, I. No, I hear you. I hear you. So do I. But I don't, look, theaters aren't going to survive. Um, I had a conversation with somebody on Drinking Bros last week about it. And they were like, yeah, are you really pissed about that? And I was like, yes, because you're not going out anymore. You're not seeing humans anymore. And the more and more of those experiences that keep getting taken away, you're like, well, I guess I live out of my own house and like home gyms and all that shit. Those are hot holiday items because people are tired of working out in mask. Right. Um, I got a call from somebody on the inside. It was just like, hey, man, I got a new spot for you. No mask. And I was no like, mask. They know the guy to call yeah, for no mask. Yeah, huh? they do. They know the no mask guys here, brother. Um, I also heard in New York, they are because of the cold now shutting down any restaurant that actually got to this point and like survived with outdoor seating. Great. So they're all going to be done. Which is really fun, right? Jeez. Yeah. So they really made it like all the way. As soon as they get a vaccine, there's a snowstorm. Their business closes. Yeah, there's a snowstorm coming so, in. I yeah. think they're supposed to get like eight inches. It's funny you say that because uh, when you were getting ready this morning, um, Andy Cohen was on. Kelly and Ryan. Mm -hmm. He was subbing for Ryan. I don't. Sure. I don't. What, I, what the fuck are you doing, Seacrest? You know. Um, I think he had another stroke or something. I'm Did he sure. really? No, I don't know. Oh, if, if he stroked up, dude, I didn't. I'm not gonna make fun of different strokes. No, I'm not making fun of it. I just think, you know. Okay. He needs to take a break. Yeah. Um, but Andy Cohen was like, "Oh, isn't it amazing? This, this eight inches of snow. It's gonna be fluffy in New York City. It's gonna be amazing for." Christmas and it's like well for you because mm -hmm. you're rich obviously for everyone mm -hmm. else it's going to be uh, a nightmare that doesn't end and won't end um, right and will kill the business that you actually mm -hmm. somehow eked by mm -hmm. in this crazy time in New York so um, and speaking of, of New York uh, they were considered I guess Biden was trying to get Cuomo the Cuomo sexuals uh, mm -hmm. into the White House mm -hmm. so he tried to get Andrew Cuomo a job and then uh Something popped up, Jabes, that uh, he had had an inappropriate sexual relationship with someone. It was like, dude, he's got a nipple ring at 65 years old. Like, yes. What, would you, what do you Who think he does on the weekends? Who was someone? I don't know. I'm not saying. Does it matter unless he worked, unless they worked for him? Yeah, they worked, they worked for him. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah. you know, look, again, 65-year-old dude with a nipple ring. Show the picture since we're able to do that. Uh, Andrew Cuomo nipple ring. It's a white polo. Um, Again, odd choice, like leaving the house with a white polo on when you have a huge barbell oh, nipple, nipple ring. ring yeah, yeah uh, it's weird, but yeah, pop that up. Uh, there we go. What the fuck? Yeah. Wild, right? Um, so those are definitely, because the, that's the barbell. We go to Giorgio, our sex expert here for dirty dungeon shit. Are um, we yeah, like that's definitely a Dom's barbell nipple rings. He definitely has some assless chaps, probably familiar with a whip yep. and or paddle, yeah. but uh, he uh, gets down. <laughs> so what happens is, is like it appeared that if he, he I can see it through this. He tried to put band-aids over it. Uh, um, so people with nipple rings, uh, you, you got to put a band-aid over it for certain outfits and shit like that. Mm -hmm. Like I like that the white t-shirt was that important that he was like, man, this is, is going to be a band-aid day for these nipple rings. Yeah, um, have to. I got to put a Band-Aid down there. Have to. Because otherwise, everybody's going to be able to see it. It's like, no, dude, we can see them anyways. Um, that's, that's what you do with those things. Um, yeah, so it was, it was a staffer, Jacob Nichols said. A Cuomo sexually harassed her for several years. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, okay. he said uh, Cuomo's response was she has the right to her own opinions over the sexual harassment claims. But, uh, oh, there she is. Eh. Yeah, I get yeah, it. Yeah, he definitely sexually yeah, he definitely harassed her. Said, he definitely said some shit to her. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder what he said to her, you know? Right. Started rubbing his nips. He yep. started rubbing those nips and said, hey, Literally just do you like to be hung from the ceiling? You know? Um, Did they say what he said? No. No, okay. no, they won't say that shit. I mean, they will if it actually comes fully out, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lindsay Boyland is her name. Um, yeah, I get it. That's not a surprise. Sure. Again, nipple rings, white polo shirts. Yeah, man, you're probably 
into some weird shit, you know? Yeah. Some snuff films. Yeah. Probably asked her to take off her, her shoes. We found a rat in the office in New York City. Probably asked her to take off her shoes and kill, kill the rat with her foot. Right. Her bare foot, you know? Right. Because that's a fetish. Fifty Shades of Fredo. <laughs> Nice, AJ. What's the also what's the fetish where you uh, you kill ra- you kill like mice with your uh, your bare feet? That is a thing, by the way. I wasn't just making that up. Yeah, I you don't know it, James. You're into no. I mean, I do believe, and I have said before that if you can think it in your mind, there is someone that's into it. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I was a German woman who made a series of these videos um, for animal cruelty. I, I mean, it was mice. Is that an animal? Yeah. It is? Whoa. I, don't, I mean, we don't have time for that lesson, right? Is it? But go no. ahead. What were you going to say? I, there's some where you're like, man, they were just made to feed like fucking cobras and shit, snakes, right? Like what, is a, what does a mice, what does a mouse do besides like scientific experiments where they sew like ears to their backs and shit like that? What good are they besides like scientific experiments? Okay, so what were you going to say? <laughs> I'm at a loss now. Okay. I, I just feel like uh, no living thing deserves to have its skull crushed so someone else can jack off. Yeah, I believe uh, that. I believe unless that's Unless there's true. consent. Yeah. I believe that's true, yeah. I mean, but, but mice, all they do is scientific experiments on their... What's, name something else that you would use a mouse for in this life. Rectal pleasure? Yes. There you go. But it can live. That's the it's that's like a lemmy. It can situation. live, that's and they they've don't been proven live. to be quite smart, right? So they can yeah, obviously they like feel all they, the things and be f- afraid and all of these things that you're like, look, if it's an amoeba, and it's a jelly, you know, if it's a jellyfish, I don't know. Yeah, Punch they, in the they face. Did experiments where they like help each other. They have like empathy. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> they also uh, so what they do is they take small mice, freeze them until they're dead for a little bit, and then put them in a balloon. And then you put that inside of another man's asshole and they try to get their way out of there. So like that's part of the whole thing. Like they wake up from the dead and then crawl out of your asshole and that's a sexual fetish. So what? Oh, yeah, J- James? Also true. Yeah, it's gears. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, gear dog went through that. I can't even hear his name without. He hit that fifth gear. Yeah, yeah. With the gerbils. Yeah, man. Um, so like what's the, you know, like a gerbil, I guess is fun for the kids, but then the, they all die. And those tubes, and then you got to explain death to your child for the first time at six years old. Or you don't, like my parents did, right? What happened to pickles? Yeah, what? Garbanzo, what, what, actually. Oh, was that? <laughs> Garbanzo, guinea pig. I guess that, they're all in the same sort of family, yes, right? Yes, yeah. Guinea pig, long-haired guinea pig. Had them in a aquarium type thing, whatever, in my room. Uh, came home and my didn't see the body or anything like that. And my mom had told me that he... Uh, jumped out, killed himself. Oh, 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 got you. So unhappy with me. Yeah. That he just ended it all. No, No, she didn't say that. That would have been so awesome. Holy shit. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. You know, I'm like, oh, geez, I thought we were fucking buds, dude. And, um, how old, how old were you? Um, I was going to school and coming back. So maybe like sixth grade, something like this. Okay. Seventh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And so I didn't see the body, didn't have any proof. I was like, all right, I mean, I guess he's dead, right? Like, and he jumped out and my mom just did something with it. Um, But my mom is, uh, I've probably told this before. I don't know. She's like a doctor. She has a bachelor of science, you know, so she's like into anatomy and all of this stuff. Cut to, I'm looking in the freezer many, many months later. That's right. Yes, yes. Uh, I, you and told everyone me has, yeah, yeah, everyone has like these things in the freezer that either your mom keeps where you're like, oh, that's Colin a thing. Colin Kaepernick of, ice cream. Yeah. No, but like a dough, maybe like a thing in a bag where you're like, that's not really food. That's something that we've just like saved because you're going to make some kind of pizza Bacon or something grease with it and a later or whatever, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and one day I was like super hungry. There wasn't anything. And I kind of was like, all right, well, what's in this bag? <gasps> Garbanzo. No. Garbanzo is in the bag. <laughs> and I guess I'll just leave it at that. And so many questions. No. So many questions. There's a lot of questions. What did, what did you do with the bag? What did you do with Garbanzo? I dropped, I dropped it to the ground. It sent, you know what I mean? It was like a frozen. Oh, it was, it was a, like a frozen block ice. Yeah. Um, went to my mom. Well, I was, I was going to, you know, boil it and put the. What? Taxidermy? Yeah. Oh. Kind of. So she, she was like she an, an amateur, amateur taxidermist, sort of. Which isn't a thing. 
Mm -hmm. uh that's so that's... like squirrel skins and like weird skeletons that are like put together yeah yeah you bet um that's a serial killer that's what you described yeah yeah so there's that sure um and then you're telling me that stuff, fucking fun stuff. We, we can't smash a mice with our bare foot and jack off like it was dead i mean it was dead i believe that it did that i just don't she just didn't get rid of the body a lot you know of what judgment I mean? on this end yeah how do well, you you should yeah I, I, again bob how bob did you, yeah did you find out anything that happened with mice what has a mice done that's been great for the world besides no, I operating find, on, i couldn't find it <laughs> exactly it's a fucking animal that is just simply bred he already said though that they shit. like are very smart they have empathy they can feel fear and pain and all of these things so whatever great well, let's have one babysit then if they're that fucking smart and amazing Let's have one just uh, Saturday. Yeah, we're, we're watching the game here. We'll just uh, cancel the babysitter. Get the mice over here. Um, You're so stupid. They've got empathy and they understand fear and and smiles. Uh, let's get let's get, just have the mouse babysit our child for Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> It's like the iPhone. Like you think everybody is on your side with it, but we're they all are. sitting there being like. You just press the th just press the thing. No, no, no. You know and what I mean. Speaking of which, uh, the new iPhone is out. Thank God uh, for everybody who has that. Uh, therefore, the battery life on this is uh, just fucking dead. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely fucking dead. I have to charge this goddamn thing nine hundred times a day. It's a it's a piece of shit. They got sued for this already, and they know that like you're not going to resue them. <laughs> um, where they were, they were killing all the Same battery life for the old phone. Right? Yeah. yeah, you're not going to recircumcise yourself. So um, that thing's out, by the way. And uh, and I did order the new computer. It's coming. Um, thank you, Apple, for for cock teasing me and let me think that I could have that for Christmas. As soon as I press buy on that on a nine million dollar fucking device, it uh, eh, it'll be here the way we want it to be here, January twenty eighth. Ah, sweet. After the Super Bowl. Right. Fuck you. Um, if you guys are looking for any last minute Christmas gifts, so you said Recirc. Um, there's actually a product that for regrowing foreskin, like mm -hmm. if you were circumcised and you did not consent to that, which is a big thing. Ah. Um, so it's go to tlctugger.com. Whoa, 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 whoa. And um, that's going to be a little product that, you're going to wear, it's going to take a really long time, but you can actually re like pull your foreskin back out. Uh, so I don't know. It is elegant. It is simple. Your skin. Oh, it's your skin cone. Yeah. So it's, nice. it's a process of stretching. So it's going to take a while. Got it. Got it. Got it. Giorgio, um, are you in? You're, you're on Cirque. Right? And it's for, you know. Right. So I wouldn't need this. I am not the target market for this product. Right. Oh, for these are people who want to be. So they were circumcised they as a baby and Got it. they are now on a crusade of, well, the guy that made this product yeah. is on a crusade of like, you mm. didn't consent to that. You know, you should have your foreskin and this is how you get it back. Can you put that, that page up on that exact page on, uh, on the screen here? I just want to, I did for a second. Do you want me to put it back again? Yes, please. Um, cause there's something that, uh, I think is important for the audience here on TLC So that's, that's up full screen for everybody. Um, right underneath it, it says, uh, notice Black Lives Matter, uh, Ron's on HBO, the guy who created the, the tugger. Mm -hmm. And then uh, COVID-19 delays are possible when you get the dick skin cone right. that you were hoping was going to be in your stocking. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, sure, sure. Uh, he was on Howard Stern. Are you fucking curious? <laughs> yeah, he's a character for sure. <laughs> and it's a movement, you know? He's got a. You got a. He's got a good group of uh, dudes. I, I don't. I around. don't want like having not had skin over my my mm -hmm. the head of my pe I don't want re want that. Sure. No part of me is like, oh shit, I remember that day. Yeah. You know. Yeah. What's that disease where you remember every day of your life? There's like nine people in the world who it's have. It's not it. a disease, but um. It's yeah. It's it is definitely. Yeah. It's like, a disease. It's weird. It's a <laughs> If you had to remember every day for your the, your entire life, that's a that fucking would disease, suck, dude. dude. Not even joking. Um, no, that it's the girl. Suck. It's the fucking woman from Taxi. I've talked about her before, uh, with the red hair. That's more famous for that than. Well, 
that was crazy, that interview, where it was just like December 1st, 1956, and she was like five years old, and she could tell you what she did that day. And she was, I wore a red dress to school, and I had these white shoes. And, Craziness. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the name of it. You're, you're still on the circumcision sites. Um, I'd like you to be on the... Uh, the site where, where you remember every... There's a disease called remembering every Mary day of your Lou life. Mary Lou Henner. That's it. Sandy it's Mary Lou Henner. Sh- Sandy Schmidt. Thank you, Sandy. Fucking... Who is that running the computer there who's just still looking at the circumcision cones? They're fascinated. Sorry. That's Rob. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hyperthymisia yeah, syndrome. Hyperthymisia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but a small number of syndrome, people, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's a disease. Yeah. Syndrome? Uh, HSAM is what they're... they're hyphenating that as so yeah if you have h sam I, how fucked up would that be i don't remember any of that shit oh thankfully dude right yeah because it was like i mean thinking about it now like there's like awkward days as like a middle school like when, like you were oh. saying and you're like oh shit imagine if you would remember what day did garbanzo die yeah exactly i don't know but they do yeah and they'll remember every day yeah. that it, they wake yeah. up and it's like april 13th that's the Gar- Garbanzo Day, and that's what's going to trigger you that Garbanzo day. Garbanzo Day. Yeah. I'm surprised Mary Lou Henner is normal after that shit. There's, yeah. only, there's only 61 people in the world. Yeah. 61 people disease. in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Syndrome. It's a disease. Uh, I don't. I do not want to have that. He's like one in Rome, right? I yeah. Don't know. There it is. Who re- who signs the check? And I I, don't I, know. I think we're we're also going to move back around to mice too for him. I think he'll end up getting one smashed up for for some porn. Who? Uh, Hot Bob. No, he won't. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to switch him on the mice thing. Uh, I'm not saying you have to jack off to it by any means, but you should admit just that a, a live mice, and let live. Well, a mice isn't a real animal that people care about, where it's just like, all right, great. And you're going to see that Hot Bob sees it that way at some point? Well, here, uh, let me put it to you this way, Hot Bob. <laughs> if you came into work one day and you were like, man, my fucking wife was cheating on me and we're getting divorced and uh, I can't take my life anymore... I would, obviously, I would ask you, what happened, Robert? Sit down with me, Robert. Tell me what happened. Sit on, Pop, sit on Papa's lap and, and tell me what happened. Not, and you would be like, not, okay. yeah. You'd be like, I, I walked in and I found a whole freezer. I opened up the freezer. It was the 4th of July. I was trying to have a bomb pop, and there was just a bunch of mice <laughs> stuffed in balloons that were half alive, half dead. And I asked what happened, and she finally admitted to this lover that she had, and that's what they loved to do together. Mm-hmm. You took the mice out, and you brought it in for me to see to prove to me what had happened. And you were so angry that you just threw it against the wall as hard as you can and died. Right. I would not judge you, Bob, because it's not a fucking animal. Wow. Not an animal. Yeah. As our HR department, I'm going to have to step in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, oh, nope, 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 nope. I can hear that thing smacking against the wall right now. Um, and I'd be fine with it. I'd be like, all right, cool. Clean it up, obviously, but uh, we'll see mm-hmm. you for the next show. Yeah. See you for the next show. Yeah. <laughs> People are saying, Hot Bob, report back. Yeah. I don't even know what I mean, you know, if, if I find that my wife <laughs> is engaging in mouse play, <laughs> then things might change, I guess. I, I guess I'm open to that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sledge Texas uh, or TX. Whatever he says, sure. uh, Ross, I got you English lessons for Christmas cards in the mail. It's funny, man. Uh, somebody else said that too. And I was like, I, I speak with my own vernacular just because I think it's funny. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I don't care. Mouse, mice, whatever it is. Meese. Do we start let's, a, let's get a bunch dictionary? Of, yeah, let's get a bunch of meese in here. Yeah, rock, Ross. A Ross, 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 Yeah, Ross, mm-hmm. eh. I'll work on it. Yeah, <laughs> workshop it. Uh, <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I like, like squirrel die and shit like that. That's a big theme in my books. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, paperbacks out now, by the way, uh, as the sun rises, it dawns on him. Still no hardback. Not going to get that until after uh, the New York times list is, uh, is done, but, uh, the paperbacks out there and the audio book will be done soon. Uh, we cleared some rights from uh, Shawshank Redemption uh, musically really pushing it on this one. Sure. Um, really funny. You're fantastic in it. Um, by Thank the way, you. and uh, and so is Dan. Dan's really fucking funny. In it I know, weirdly. Um, yeah, uh, and Vincent Marcus is in it as uh, Babe Ruth, who's Had just fucking awesome, man. Had to be. Uh, who else? Jesse Mer- Merlin's in it from uh, FDR, American Badass, and and Keller. He played your brother in Keller. Yeah. Yeah, we had a bunch of people in this fucking thing. It's great. Xander was great. Xander's really good. Yeah, but buddy of mine, it was just like, hey man, 
I would love to do your audiobook. And I was like, cool. I was like, are you fucking act or what? And he's just like, yeah, dude, that's what I really wanted to do. And I, I, he goes, I wanted to be a voiceover actor. And I was like, all right. And I asked him if he could do like Irish accents and shit like that. And he crushed it. And I was oh, like, yeah. holy shit. Hidden talents from around the world. Really, really good. Yeah, but that'll probably drop uh, what week, week, week and a half, mm-hmm. somewhere like that. So it's, it's up to Audible at that point. But uh, they make a lot of money off that. So they're not going to block that one, I bet. God damn, the fucking kickbacks that they get on audiobooks is insane West, dude. I can't fucking believe it how much money they take. It's oh, crazy. Yeah. But uh, you will have that out to the world. And uh, happy Pinecone Day, people, everybody. This is it. Absolutely. This is the night. You got to leave your syrup out. Yes. And look out for Jimmy Tree Legs Jimmy tomorrow. Jimmy Tree Legs will be shimmying down the chimney tonight. It's uh, 12.01. So leave a plate full of syrup out for Jimmy mm-hmm. Tree Legs. And, uh, and enjoy your pine cone day, everyone. James, you look beautiful. Thank you. Yes. Uh, you, you look like you got a holiday glow to you. Oh, my gosh. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, happy pine cone day, everybody. Go to iTunes. Rate the show a five star and leave a quick review. It helps scoot us on up the charts. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I'm Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon.